Hello and thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of The Photographer's Story. Now just a quick message before we get started. My one-off print sale ends this evening, uh, midnight British summer time. So please have a browse and take advantage of the 40% discount if there's an image there that you love and you'd like to own as a print. Now, I'm very happy to have my friend and fantastic coastal photographer Rachel Talibar contribute a story this week. Now, I was delighted when Rachel reached out to me a few years ago when I started this channel and we've since become friends, we've been shooting together in Scotland and we've run a residential workshop together in Torridon in 2018. Now, for me, Rachel was an obvious choice for this series, not just for her fantastic photography, but because I feel like we share similar sensibilities. You know, our subject matter and style might be very different, but I feel that behind every image is a similar appreciation for emotional influences drawn from the past and present moment. So here's Rachel to share a little bit more. Well, thank you, Simon, for inviting me to share some stories. And I'm going to share two stories. And the first one is about this photograph here which I made last year during a trip to Oregon in the USA. Um, I go to Oregon every year now. I've come to really, really love it there. It's the most beautiful stretch of coastline. And going back to places is really important to me. Um, I don't tend to get bored very easily, maybe, but also I think there's more to it than that. If I go somewhere for the first time, there's always that kind of niggly worry that maybe I'll never be back. And that messes with my head. I'm thinking, I've got to get the shot, you know, because I'm worried there'll be another, there won't be another chance. If I know I'm going to come back, I just chill out about that completely. And I don't worry about capturing a portfolio photograph or it'll be a wasted trip, that's gone, because I know I can try again next year or whenever. So going to Oregon every year is really something I've been enjoying enormously and it's taken the pressure off and enabled me just to enjoy being there. And this photograph um, was made on a day when I actually, although I've been to Oregon many times, I had found a new beach and I'd done a recce the day before like the look of it, a little bit less accessible than some of the more well-known beaches there, a um, little bit further from parking, and it looked promising, and I planned to go back for sunrise the next day. Now, Oregon is a west-facing coast and known for beautiful sunsets, but I prefer it actually in the morning. Uh, there are fewer people about, the beaches are pristine because the tides wash them clean overnight, and I just, I like the soft light that you get in the morning. So I went back the next morning and I set off from the car park down the beach, quite a long walk to where I wanted to go. And as I started to walk on this beautiful empty beach with just the waves and the pure sand, it was gorgeous. There were a couple of bald eagles up in a tree on um, the cliff and they were calling to each other. And as I walked, one of them took off and just swooped down and skimmed across the beach, maybe 50 feet in front of me, and then disappeared off down the coast. And it was just the most wonderful experience. Now, bald eagles are ubiquitous on that coast, I know, but I'm from England, so that was pretty cool to me, and I suspect experiences like that just never get boring. So fueled by this amazing encounter with nature, I kept walking and I eventually got to the spot that I had scoped the day before and where I made the photograph. And um, there are these amazing rocks there and you are standing on the beach on the sand and the rocks are between you and the sea. So there was quite a big surf, there's quite, quite a lot of waves that day and they were breaking against these rocks but I was safe on the sand. And that was really, really exciting. And I made this photograph just of a mighty wave crashing against the rocks behind them. And I deliberately avoided any sense of scale in the photograph 
because I'd like the viewer to be able to imagine the scale for themselves. And I like the fact that you're not quite sure whether, whether that white water there is spray going up or something being cast down from the heavens. And I called it the lost world um, because I wanted to capture that sense of something slightly otherworldly um, and just maybe just to reference a favourite movie. But even if I hadn't got a photo that I like, that day would have been completely worth it for that wonderful experience with the bald eagles. And the other story I want to share is also about a picture from Oregon. This is the picture and I made this actually a year earlier than the first one. This is from 2018 and it is in fact, I think, my favourite photograph that I made in the whole of 2018 which might seem a bit surprising to people who know my work because it's not a mighty wave, um, but it is the case. And I think initially when I took this photo, what attracted me was simply the contrast between this little white triangular rock in the foreground and the dark rocks behind. And then I loved that rather elegant, elegant curve of the, the cave or the crevice going up behind the rock and it was obviously going to be a black and white photograph. I photographed it um, intending it to be black and white just to emphasise the, the tones and that contrast between the white rock and the dark rocks. But perhaps what I hadn't consciously registered but had subconsciously noticed came through later when I came home and the following year exhibited this picture because a few people said to me, there are loads of faces in those rocks. Now, if you look at this picture carefully in the dark rocks, there are in fact a lot of faces. And it seems to me that they're looking down in a sort of protective, caring way at the little white rock. Now, I suspect I had subconsciously clocked those originally and they were one of the reasons I made the picture. But the viewers of the picture articulated it for me. And that is really the other thing I love about photography. Because while the experience of making the photos is hugely important to me, I also think sharing is really, really important. And sharing my work with others and having their feedback and their response to it keeps me going. Um, so. The two together probably sum up the things that I love about photography the most. Thank you very much Rachel and what a fantastic bookshelf that is. Now I hope that Rachel's message and images have resonated with you as they have with me but there's a few key points that I'd like to re-emphasize if I may. Now what I found very interesting and there's something that I agree with entirely is Rachel's acceptance of traveling to a distant location and potentially not making any portfolio images for the whole of the trip. And well, it's not really about acceptance, it's just the sheer enjoyment of just being there. And that's a very powerful thing because our state of mind can have a huge impact upon what we see and how we shoot. Yes, it's fantastic if we can make some great images, but if we self-impose, a pressure to do so because we'd feel like a failure if we didn't, then perhaps that can set in motion a cycle of negative thought processes that might adversely impact our ability to relax and enjoy and in turn how we connect with and interpret our surroundings. You might be someone who thrives upon and lives for the pressure. Personally, I'd revel in moments such as Rachel's experience with those bald-headed eagles that moment of contact with nature, which I know will have put a beaming smile on her face, left her shoulders feeling a little bit lighter, her head clear of frustration and pressure, and look at the result. You know, a mindset to satisfy her needs for enjoyment and a moment to enjoy for a lifetime. Stunning. I love the observation of the water crashing down from the heavens, which is exactly what immediately appealed to me. But I think it's Rachel's absolute love for the coast which allows her to see these stories play out and then elevate the images to something more otherworldly. It's wonderful when viewers of our work can be captivated enough by a photograph that they want to spend time with it and be lost for a moment, perhaps 
imagine themselves being there enjoying their own experiences or in this instance start to see faces in rocks. I think it's a very powerful thing if we can connect with the experience of photography and why it's important to us and then translate that into our imagery. There can be a great sense of satisfaction in sharing our work but in my case and I'm sure Rachel's too it's not just about sharing something that's aesthetically pleasing but communicating something that's personal. But that's it for this episode, I hope you've enjoyed it. Like I said, this is your last opportunity to get a discount on my print, so please take a look. But thank you very much for watching this episode, and as always, I hope to see you for the next one. Mm -hmm.